The first cases of Lyme disease were found here, in Lyme, Connecticut in 1975. And this is how many cases were reported in 2023, nearly 500,000 in the United States alone. The disease has spread at an alarming rate. A vaccine has been in research and trials for years, but it has been highly controversial and has faced significant setbacks and skepticism. Millions have and will continue to struggle with the disease. Bodies achy. Completely messed up heartbeat. Joint pain. You couldn't even get out of bed. For months, sometimes for life. I wound up having to leave my job because the cognitive problems were so bad. Medical technology has advanced a lot since 1975. So what's the holdup? How has this disease spread so much? And where is the vaccine? So surprisingly, we already had a Lyme disease vaccine and it was available to the public, briefly. This is Dr. Stanley Plotkin, a big name in the vaccine world. My own personal work on polio, huge epidemics. He developed the rubella vaccine and has worked on several others. In the 1990s, a vaccine was developed. Actually, GlaxoSmithKline was shown to be effective and was licensed. In 1998, a company now known as GlaxoSmithKline released Limerix the first publicly available Lyme disease vaccine. Early results were promising. More than 10,000 individuals received the vaccine and results showed it was 76% effective in preventing Lyme disease. This seemed like the beginning of the end of Lyme. Yay. But just four years later, it was pulled from the market, not for scientific reasons, but largely due to public backlash. Some recipients reported experiencing side effects, primarily joint pain and symptoms resembling autoimmune responses, such as arthritis-like pain and inflammation. In response to the rising reports of side effects, the FDA and the CDC conducted safety reviews of Lyme Ricks through systems like the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, and also compiled an advisory panel of independent experts. Their findings reaffirmed the vaccine was safe, and there was no statistical evidence linking the vaccine to new health issues. However, the anecdotal Total reports of joint pain and autoimmune symptoms became highly publicized. Anti-vaccine groups decided that the vaccine was dangerous and GSK decided that it was not financially viable to continue with the vaccine. So yeah, vaccines were controversial even back then, but let's please try to keep that whole debate separate and not conflate the two vaccines. Thanks. Sales for the new Limerick's vaccine slowed, and several class action lawsuits were filed against GlaxoSmithKline. None of them were successful, but the negative press, public skepticism, declining sales, and mounting legal issues were enough. By 2002, Limerick's was pulled from the market. Limerix's failure was significant and would set the stage for future Lyme vaccines to come. Right or wrong, it led the public to mistrust a potential solution to a growing problem, and it made companies extremely wary of developing one. And for over two decades, this has left us without any Lyme disease vaccine. Meanwhile, cases have continued to rise and spread into new areas of the country. Hey, I'm Chris, founder of Green Billy Meals. I also wrote a book called How to Hike the Appalachian Trail. If you're an outdoor adventurer, you might be interested in our adventure meals, which are 650 calorie ready to eat meal bars. Think of them like a Rice Krispie Treat on steroids. Green Belly Meals, and these are these really delicious uh, bars. Check us out at greenbelly.com. Okay, back to Lyme disease. Lyme disease is believed to have begun with the white-footed mouse, a small animal that carries the bacteria Borrelia without getting sick. This is a stuffed animal, but this little mouse is an unlikely and important character in the Lyme disease vaccine saga. I'll explain why in a second. Borrelia is a spiral-shaped bacteria that affects multiple systems in the body. Ticks pick up the bacteria from infected mice or other small mammals or birds. As these now-infected ticks mature, they move on to larger hosts like deer. Deer don't spread Lyme directly because they're generally immune to the disease. However, they do play an indirect role in spreading Lyme by allowing ticks to travel greater distances. Eventually, if the infected tick bites a human, it can pass on the disease, especially if they have been attached for more than a day or two. So I've actually seen these Lyme disease concentration maps many times through the years and have wondered about the oddly hyper concentrated regions in the Northeast and upper Midwest, especially given that warmer regions like the Southeast where I'm from have more ticks. So we dug a little deeper and there seem to be a couple reasons for this, some of which are debated. This goes back to the source of it all our white-footed mouse friend. The Lyme-hosting mouse is more concentrated in the Northeast and Upper Midwest than the South. And also, Southern ticks have more non-infected 
species options in reptiles to feed on, resulting in overall less ticks carrying Lyme. To oversimplify, think of northern ticks as kind of having a small menu with the main course being infected white-footed mice, and southern ticks having a whole buffet of non-infected animal options. Another reason for regional disparities in Lyme disease is climate. Some studies observe ticks in the warmer temperatures of the southeast usually stay hidden under a layer of leaves, making them less likely to come in contact with humans. The first cases were noticed when a group of children in Lyme, Connecticut mysteriously began experiencing joint pain, arthritis, and fatigue. I'm sure the town of Lyme really appreciates that claim to fame. The illness was traced back to the bacteria carried by black-legged ticks. Lyme disease cases increased throughout the 1990s. Today, the CDC estimates 476,000 people are diagnosed in the U.S. every year. Lyme disease cases are rising in Europe too, now exceeding 200,000 annually, with hotspots in Germany and Sweden. Many argue ticks are spreading due to warming global temperatures resulting in more habitats for their hosts, and mild winters mean ticks are no longer experiencing the usual winter die-off. This expansion isn't limited to wilderness areas and hiking trails either. Ticks carrying Lyme can now be found in suburban backyards and city parks. It spread particularly in my state, Pennsylvania. It became very prevalent and actually infected one of my sons quite seriously. He became quite ill and was hospitalized. If Lyme isn't caught and treated early, it can lead to serious long-term health problems. I was having such joint pain and deep fatigue. It hurt to walk. The worst symptom for me was the cognitive impairment. By the time I went to my first appointment at the Lyme specialist, I had to take my sister with me because I couldn't navigate there on my own. As these serious cases become more common, the economic cost of Lyme disease is also rapidly increasing, costing the U.S. health system $1.3 billion annually. And for the individuals affected, it can be devastating. I was in charge of, of managing large-scale disaster response, 12-hour days, seven days a week. And by the time I got through the first three weeks of that disaster response, I was just broken. I wound up having to leave my job because the cognitive problems were so bad. Now, the most promising Lyme vaccine yet, VLA-15, developed by Pfizer and Valneva, could change everything. This vaccine currently has over 6,000 participants enrolled in phase three trials. It's final stage across the US and Europe. VLA-15 works by targeting a protein on the bacteria that causes Lyme. When the humans produce the protected immune response, this antibody could block the transmission of the Lyme disease bacteria. VLA-15 trains the immune system to recognize and block the Lyme bacteria before it can spread in the body. What makes VLA-15 especially promising is that it targets multiple strains of the Lyme bacteria, making it effective across different regions. A vaccine that has the OSPE from six different species of Borrelia. So now we have a vaccine that potentially could control Lyme disease both in the U.S. and in Europe. Early trials have shown promising results in producing antibodies against Lyme with minimal side effects. And researchers are hopeful VLA-15 could be available by 2026. Other companies like Moderna are also working on Lyme disease vaccines. And another option researchers are exploring is pre-exposure medications that could be taken before potential tick encounters, similar to how we can shield ourselves from malaria, meaning we could get a prescription for temporary Lyme disease protection, say for a week-long hiking trip. This summer, I became one of about half a million people in the United States to be diagnosed with Lyme disease. We really need better treatments and tests for Lyme, but what we need most of all is a vaccine. So still, why no vaccine? Well, there are still big hurdles to overcome. Yeah, interestingly enough, public mistrust is back again. In a world where vaccine hesitancy has only grown, gaining support for a new vaccine is no small task. Lyme patients by necessity become their own medical experts because Lyme has been so denied, marginalized and minimized in the medical community worldwide. You had to be your own researcher. To complicate matters more, in early 2023, testing on the the VLA-15 vaccine was stopped for half of their trial participants due to problems with how the study was run by a third-party operator. While these errors have been accounted for, incidents like these continue to give vaccine skeptics reasons to cry foul. Another challenge is the diversity of Borrelia strains. Lyme disease is caused by different species of the bacteria in different parts of the world, meaning that a single vaccine may not be effective everywhere. And just like the flu, new vaccines may need to be rolled out when a new strain of bacteria appears to maintain protection. And like the flu shot, the effectiveness wears off over time. This could require several booster shots a year. Outside of vaccines, some are suggesting focusing more on the source. 
Things like tick tubes are being tested, where mice walk through these insecticide-coated tubes to prevent spreading ticks. These seem effective in small areas, but not on a large scale. There's even been talk of vaccinating the mice directly. Could you immunize mice and deer? There are certainly have uh, been a experimental demonstrations that you can do that. It's very difficult. Most agree that vaccinating animal hosts across entire continents is just unrealistic. The progress being made on a Lyme disease vaccine is exciting. If successful, it could save millions of people from the serious physical, mental, and economic complications associated with Lyme disease. But we're not quite there yet. The vaccine still has its fair share of complications. Final clinical trials, booster shots, constantly evolving strains, and of course, the public's trust. This is a disease that should be prevented, and we now have the tools to do so, and I hope that will become an actuality in the next couple of years. Until a reliable vaccine does become available, prevention is our best defense. So spray up and do your tick checks. We're a small team that loves the outdoors. If you like this video, we'd love it if you like and subscribe. Subscribe. A big thanks to Dr. Stanley Plotkin, Dr. Yi Pen Lin, and Logan for their help making this video. Until next time. <laughs> feels so weird. What is that?